We're gonna talk about the biology and the nomenclature of a fish. Why is that important? The more you know about the fish you're fishing for, the easier it is to catch, knowing its habits, what it eats, its strongest attributes. So I'm gonna start with three categories um, that biologists use to put fish in a, in a label. The first one is an inferior feeder. I'll say that again, inferior feeder. The example of an inferior feeder would be a redfish, a bonefish. I have a redfish sitting right in front of me and I'm gonna to explain to you why he's an inferior feeder. The lower part of the redfish's jaw and mouth is inferior to the top, or, top part. The redfish's number one attribute is to smell and get his head down into oyster bars or in grass flats or wherever he's at and root around. You've heard the word tailing redfish. The reason he's doing that is he's out there tailing around, rooting around down in oysters or in mud or in grass and he's looking for crabs, shrimp and bait fish. His tail is up in the air. He's using his nose to find those things. His strongest attribute is, the, is smell. So if you know you're fishing for an inferior feeder, it's really important to know that if his head is down on the bottom, you might want to get a bait or keep your baits down on the bottom where he's fishing. A couple of other things that you want to know about a redfish is obviously he has a false eye. For people that don't know, the false eye is a protection thing. If a porpoise or a shark goes to eat him, that make-believe eye where the predator will go hit, thinking it's the redfish's head, will give him a chance to swim off so he can live. Um, Redfish have crushers in the back of their mouths. They have little grind, little sharp teeth, but they're not razor blade sharp. You can actually lip a redfish, but if you get your finger too far back, there's crushers in there. Very important. So when you're fishing for redfish, the number one attribute is smell. That's why so many things work like cut bait and Berkeley gulps are the number one bait in the state of Florida using for redfish because they smell. The next fish I'm gonna use here is a superior feeder. I'll say that again, a superior feeder. That would be like a snook, a tarpon, where the bottom lip is superior to the top. The redfish, it's the complete opposite. With a snook, you'll see this big, dark, pronounced lateral line. His number one attribute is that lateral line to feel like a vibration and detect things from a, from a long distance away. When a snook takes a bait, he usually takes the bait with the bait, the air, and the water. That's when you hear that pop up, a sucking action where he'll suck in the whole bait, the air, and the water at one time. Most of the time when you're fishing for snook, you're not gonna be fishing on the bottom. It doesn't mean you can't catch a snook on the bottom, you can, but most of the time, they're gonna be in the middle water column to the top. They're a superior feeder. Now I'm gonna go to the last feeder, which is called the terminal feeder. So, so far we covered an inferior feeder, a superior feeder, and now a terminal feeder, which is a mackerel, a Spanish mackerel. A terminal feeder is like a pelagic fish that roams the open ocean. He'll see baits and he'll, they'll be fat, he'll see the shine, he'll swim to it, slash it, cut it, and come back and hit it again. Um, if you look at his tail, it's got a fork. His attribute is his keen sight and his speed, as by the tail. Something about a Spanish mackerel, he's built for speed. They swim really fast. The reason I mentioned the tails is if you look at a redfish, again, go back to the inferior feeder, the flat tail is built for power. The thing about the snook, he's got part of a V and part of flat. He's got both power and speed. He's got the best of both worlds. So when you go fishing, knowing that the mackerel, which is your, in, which is your terminal feeder, will feed on top, you're gonna be using flashy baits on top of the water. If you're fishing for snook, you might be in the middle water column to the top, and if you're fishing for redfish, you might be on the bottom. Knowing more about the species and the habitat and how they are will help you catch a lot more fish, especially when you're picking a lure or a bait.